So on the body art shoot today, I'm using this equipment. I've got my 5D Mark II, which is my trusty, with this 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Um, it's a really nice, easy lens to use for the type of work that I do, certainly for the colleges, because it's all about speed. I can't be kind of walking backwards and forwards. Um, where this, I can zoom in and out. One consideration is not to be so wide that you start distorting features, whether you're shooting close-up beauty or shooting a person. Obviously, the wider you're shooting, if their limbs are coming closer, they will appear broader. Um, so you just have to be aware of that. So maybe shoot from 50 mil upwards, um, just so you're avoiding that wide end of the lens. But um, sometimes it's nice for visual effects, but a lot of the work, they, the type of stuff that, I want, that I'm doing, they don't want the features distorted. It has to be as you see it, so you don't want to be making anything look bigger than it actually is. Um, I've also got my trusty light meter, which always comes out with me. Um, again, I suppose this comes from working with the colleges and the stuff that I take, the stuff that I shoot is then not edited, it's just supplied to the college. With makeup students, the colleges and universities that they're going to apply to want to see their actual work. They don't want to see my Photoshop skills. They actually want to see what they can produce. So the agreement with the college is that I don't edit them. So what I have to ensure is that the images are ready for the students to be able to take to the university. So one of the things that I really got into is metering pretty much all the time, just to make sure I'm right. So any changes, however small, I'll just re it just to make sure that it's spot on exposure. And um, I've got the Skyport triggers. Um, the lights that I'm using, I've got the ELC light, which has got Skyport built in. So I just need the triggers to obviously enable that. Um, and that's probably it. I have set up a second camera just in case we're going to do any macro. But I think for this shoot, with it being body art, we probably won't do any with that camera. I'll have a look. We might do, because we're about to change the hair. Um, so I might do some from a little bit further away just to shoot the hair and the makeup. And maybe a bit of close up detail of the face, maybe the eyes, things like that. So it may come in and it's there and it's out and it's ready. And again, it's got its Skyport on, so it's all good to go when we're good to go. One thing that I thought was worth mentioning is the background system that I have in the studio. It's a metal pole that goes the length all the way through the background. Um, in my old studio, I had an issue with damp. Although I wasn't aware of it, you couldn't actually tell when you walked in the studio that it had damp. But clearly there was a problem. And the backgrounds would bow. So, and they were there was just a, an area that went into the background and the rest of it was held up by its own weight effectively. But obviously as it got damp, it bowed. Um, not that good. Um, not so good with backgrounds because obviously you get that waffly effect that we don't desire because we want a seamless background without creases, without a waffling effect. And that was what I had there. So when we moved, I decided that this was the best system for in here, because again, we don't know whether there's a damp issue here. You can never tell with these colder buildings whether you're gonna have damp issues. And also, to add to that, I also put in, to store the backgrounds, because I have plenty, um, just shelving. So it's just a standard shelving with lots of supports, so it's not gonna go anyway, because obviously they do weigh quite a lot. Um, but just so they're supported the whole time, so I don't have damp issues. And one of the things that I do try to do when I got them in the boxes is also try and keep the plastic that they came in and whether you just kind of gaffer it or masking tape the end, just so no moisture can get in. So it's the best way to keep the backgrounds because obviously you're spending money on them each time. You don't want to be spending money unnecessarily because they're getting damaged because of the weather. What we're going to do for this shoot, we've got um, our wonderful resident fine artist has produced this gorgeous picture and with the colours in the headdress we thought that it would really work and complement the look just to do some sort of headshots, head and shoulders because obviously we're, we're kind of limited with space on it, it's not the biggest background in the world but just to get that, just to get a nice kind of floral geisha feel but also pick up the tonality that's in the headdress. Shouldn't have changed too much, but we'll just meter 
So obviously we are a little bit closer to the subject. So what I'm going to do is actually drop the power on the light. Which should beep in a minute. There we go. OK, so we'll go for F10. Yep. Let's have a look. Obviously on this one, hair is not such a consideration because you haven't got the top of the hair. You've got the headdress, so we're not having to light from above. So if I can just put a tiny bit, I'm just going to come past you, Annette. Tiny, weeny, weeny bit more light that side. Sorry, you're not going to have much space there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lovely, just to fill in the shadows and just give just a little highlight across the cheek. That's lovely. And then if you look down with your eyes, just this side. That's super. Looking back at the camera again. That's super. Fabulous. Okay, so that was just really a little aside, just while we got the painting and the beautiful headdress that goes together. So just shooting a headshot. We can't really shoot much more because we're going to run out of background. So we're just going to reset the studio again. Right, we've just reset um, for a new background and this is one that Annette and I made ourselves. Um, it's just a, a board that was actually here at the mill when we inherited it or bought it. Um, and we were doing quite a lot of work. We did a lot of sandblasting and doing a lot of, sort of manual stuff. So we had lots of wood shavings and things like that. And we basically just bagged up the whole lot and made a background out of it. So again, I just want to make sure that I separate Vivian from the background. Even though she's going to be quite tight up to it, I don't really want any shadows behind her. So I'm using the strip box as a rim light, or sort of side light, and I'm using the beauty dish again, which I love, for the main light for her. We're, not, we're only shooting probably down to about their maximum, so just below where the body art finishes, just because of the background, I haven't got that much space to go with. Um, so it's just working in that area. So this time I'm probably not going to need to use the Octa because it doesn't matter as the light falls the light fall comes down her body, it's not going to matter because it's, it's not going to make that much difference. We're not going to shoot full length. I think we're good if you just keep... There's like a little area and then what I can do, because we, we made the background and there's part of the shoot that we've not done, so obviously we'd turn it the other way round and then that's for another shoot which we've not shot yet. So ordinarily this is just a plain background, it's just been slightly modified but then we'll re-modify it back once we've shot that shoot. Super. So what we probably just need, a little bit of powder just there, oh, yeah. down the nose and just a little bit on the chin, if we could. If we were shooting without the diffuser, the highlights in the makeup would be even more intense. So obviously they're quite soft with this, but if they're noticeable, it's something that you don't want to be fixing in post-production, you want to just make sure that it's right in the shot. Yeah. That's lovely. Because I've angled the lights slightly higher, you're getting quite a lot of light fall off into here, so this bit is actually in the shadows. In terms of the bottom of the background, you can't really see it unless you're really looking. That's lovely. Great. Okay. All good, just coming in a little bit closer. That's super. Let's see if I can turn it just out a little bit more. Just the power on that. I don't want to go any further back because obviously the light spreads, so I want it quite close to her. But I'm just feathering the light rather than the direct light, just so we're getting just a little bit less on the cheek here. So it's just taking it, so whilst I'm shooting close in, I just want to make sure that I haven't got heavy highlight there. When I'm shooting a bit longer, the highlight follows all the way down, so it makes more sense. But obviously for this, I just want it to be a tiny little highlight just to take the shadows out behind her. 
just turn, are you okay on there? If you just turn that way a little bit. But then, yeah, just cross that leg over a little bit. Yeah, super. That's great. Lovely. That's lovely. I'm going to take a picture of the detail against the gold background. So I'll probably just bring another strip box in, just to add just a little bit of light here. So obviously I don't want it too strong that it will affect the light that's falling onto her face, but I just want just a little bit just to soften and just highlight this area, just against the great gold background because it does look really nice. Just to see how we're looking and how much we've added back in. It's got it on its lowest power and that's probably where I'd want to be. I, I don't want too much light, I don't want it to, to affect what this light's doing but just to just add a little bit more colour in where the shadows are. That's lovely. Super. That's great. Because obviously the centrepiece to the image is the beautiful bird, so we want to make sure that we've got that shot for the makeup artist as well. Okay. That's lovely. Fabulous. And then what I'll probably do, just a bit more of a, because I'm going in close, don't need that anymore. So I'll just bring this a bit more central, just so we've got a really even lit image just of the face as well, just to show the makeup. That's just more of a head and shoulders. Okay, right, reset the studio again. So um, I think they use this for kind of tutus and things. So it's quite inexpensive. And it just makes a good base because what we're going to do then is add flowers and leaves over the top but it just takes away from what is not a very attractive mat to something that looks a bit more attractive and is less to draw your eye away so that's why we're doing this because it's quite heavy and I don't want the boom to fall I'll probably get somebody just to hold the boom so I'll probably drop this onto the boom and then just get somebody to stay nearby because I don't want it toppling on ahead that wouldn't be good so I'll just do that and then we're probably ready to go so I've taken a quick test shot and I feel the lights a bit too high so I want it to be kind of sun like but from that angle just a little bit a little bit lower I think will we'll work better just gonna do a quick test just see if I'm happier with the light down there. So to me, I think the light's just, just by dropping it, just a little bit nicer on the face. It's obviously trying to mimic the sun, so you're used to seeing light above in pretty much every situation we see the light above so just to have that co light coming from that direction just a little bit lower it was just too high for my taste and it was just creating a more flat lighting this is just chiseling out the features which obviously is what you want for beauty photography so I'm going to start shooting from this height and then I'm going to go on the ladders for a short while okay that's lovely make sure we've not got a very pink hand or anything just a little bit can I just borrow you again Samina what um, Samina's doing at the moment she's just changing the makeup slightly and she's just making sure that anywhere where there's any patches just where the body art is rubbed onto the model on the skin that's not supposed to have the body art on just making sure that it's all clean um, because you don't want to be removing it in post if it's not there in the in the original shot that's all the better. We don't want to be working on the computer all the time. What I'll probably do as well is just grab one more light. So I'm adding just another strip box just to add a little bit more light just down the body, just so we can see all of the body art, because obviously we need to remember that we're focusing on the body art for this shoot. So make sure that it's lit. But lit so you're sculpting the body, but also that you're getting the details and getting the colour details in. So I'll probably start on the lowest power and then tweak it. If I need to go a bit further back, I, we're not, the quality of this light is not as important as the quality of the main light. So if I do pull back a little bit, it doesn't matter. But I might as well start there and see where I need to go from there. It's, it's, it's the ideal starting point. Right. Okay. So that's just lifted 
because here was just in shadow, so it's just lifted the shadows there. And obviously we've got the other light just lifting the shadows the other side. So everything's lit, but you've still got shape to the model. That's lovely. Okay. That's super. Now just bring that hand just a little bit closer into the flower. Not so far. Yeah, about there. How comfortable would it be to turn it the other way? Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, that's super. So I'm just shooting from quite close in to just where the body art ends. I'll just see how low I can go down without losing the background because obviously there's a point where the background becomes the lights and the stands and everything else. So it's just seeing how, sh how low I can shoot, come down without losing that. Fab. And then what I'll probably do is get the ladder. We'll just make sure that there's no skin showing that shouldn't be showing. Yeah, that's fine. That's lovely. Okay. And just cross your leg just a tiny bit more. Just push that leg over so you just curving a little bit more that's lovely i'm not getting the whole of your i'm not getting your feet in the shot so it's just creating more of a shape that's lovely yeah that's super i think we're good mm. yeah get down this ladder not a fan of the ladder <laughs> so to recap for the day we've done a standard just a red seamless background just to sort of bring the colour all together and create quite a wow image but just with a seamless um, and then we moved on to um, based on the headdress we borrowed a friend who's a resident artist within our mill um, borrowed one of her paintings which is absolutely beautiful tonality to go with the headdress so it just kind of it lended itself to that to that image um, and then we used our custom background which is just made of sawdust and sand and all kinds of things that we found when we were um, doing the renovations here and then ending on our fabric and leaves and flowers shoot um, so we've covered quite a bit in one day and obviously just by tweak slight tweaks to the hair and slight tweaks to the makeup you can just create more of a story rather than just a standalone image you don't need very much just to create more of a story and if you're thinking about submitting images you need to have more of a story they just they don't just want one image they want a variety of images so simple changes but it makes all the difference to the shoot so that's our shoot today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found it of interest. And uh, thank you very much. I'm Deborah Selwood for the Photographer Academy.